All right. So first thing that we have is project dashboards. And the point of them is to be able to have sort of summary data in one place. Um, you can use smart variables and functions and tables. These are all things that are kind of uh, new. Um, and you can decide who you want to see them. You can even create a link so that anybody, even, even if they're not associated to the project, can see the information. So if you wanted to share uh, a dash, a particular dashboard um, with a, another group, uh, you could do that. Um, and that you would not have to associate them to your project. So uh, I'm going to walk through some of the basics for the dashboard so you get a sense of how it works. Um, uh, disclaimer, I'm absolutely not an expert in this yet, but I will try to do a better job than I did before in at least showing you how these work. So this is really sweet. You create a new dashboard. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. To get to the project dashboards, uh, there's a new link on the left. It's called project dashboards. So when you click on it, it brings up this window and starts you off with, uh, you know, to create a new dashboard or my project dashboards. At the moment, we're looking at all the project dashboards and I'm gonna create these all, these few for you from scratch so you can follow along with me. So I'm gonna start with a new one and I'm just gonna call this participant count. Okay, and I think I, I've done a little, I touched on a little of this in a previous uh, red zone or video, but again, uh, uh, I'm a little bit more familiar with how this works. But the beauty is, you know, the more you play with these, the more you'll be able to incorporate uh, some of the HTML features that have made other instruments of ours really dynamic. Uh, but the best way is to just use the wizard. So the user, the wizard is going to let you walk through what it is that you want to show on the dashboard. So it's going to show one thing in one dashboard. So in this particular case, it's going to show you the options. You know, you could choose any of these, but uh, for this particular dashboard, we just want to have a place where we can see the total number of participants that are in this particular project. So I'm going to grab the aggregate count. And then what am I going to count? I'm going to count the record IDs. Okay, so this is all the options. And by doing that, down below, it creates the quote unquote smart variable that you're going to use for your dashboard. So all you do is copy to the clipboard and close. Now, nothing appears to have happened because you need to now interact with your uh, like workspace here and put in what you want. So if you paste the, uh, I suppose, right click and paste. Um, okay, so I have control V is how they uh, want you to paste that. So this just gives you a number, but if you want to explain to somebody what this is about, then you would put in some text and say, uh, participant count for this project is something along those lines. Save the dashboard. And now you can return to your dashboards, continue adding our view. This is exactly the same as reports, how you get this back. But if I view the dashboard, this is all I'm seeing. So don't look at for anything 
too crazy. That's all I put in participant count for this project is, and this is, these are the total number of participants in this particular project. Um, from this, you could make this as fancy as you wanted, but this would be an easy way for if you wanted to share uh, results um, with some administrator or something that they wanted to track how many participants are in their project at a certain moment, they, you could create an, a, link, uh, a link with this and, um, and uh, at least I'm pretty sure you, yeah, you make it public. So if you made this publicly viewable, then here is the link, or you could create a custom link. And uh, let's see. something like that. I hate to do these because I think I've explained to you before, this sort of is a one-time deal. And uh, these are created by a third party uh, service and ties this in once and is not reusable, but I'll do that. And so now we have this variable, I mean, this link, if you click on it, uh, I'm going to see we can, oh, I have better save it first. And copy it, paste it. There we go. So, and you can, again, make this as fancy as you wanted, but here's, you know, all we did was create a little link. I took that link, that custom link, copied it, pasted it in my browser, and that's what I got. So, I mean, that's a, a start. Let me see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> my dog's name is George. And yeah, I have a female named Grace. Uh, oh, sweet. Manny, I'll be back to you in a minute about a new module. Um, and a little late to be telling me about the calc test thing in the inbox, but we'll see what we could do with that. Um, Anyway, so th this is um, participant count. So let's try something else here. Um, we're gonna create a new dashboard and uh, I'll make this um, uh, uh, ethnicity. And so for this wizard, and you have to have a title, just like you have to have a title for a report. So there's a lot of similarities here. Let's say I want to do a, um, a pie chart, let's say, and we want to look at the question about ethnicity. And so I've got this variable here. I'm going to copy it, just control C. And I say something like and I just plop in that variable, I save it, we take a look. Now we have a chart. Uh, yes, indicates Hispanic, it's blue. So roughly a fourth of our participants indicated they were Hispanic. Then there is a uh, 
feature called Smart Tables. Um, go back to my. Go back to my project dashboards, create a new dashboard here. And um, so just to show sort of basically um, how this would look, I uh, wanted to show Hang on here. Um, okay, so you haven't seen this. This is kind of an example of the things that you can do. So if there is data that has minimums and maximums, by creating a smart table, uh, we'll use this wizard and say we want a smart table. And you want all the columns by default. Uh, and you pick something like, I'm going to just grab race. Just want to show you that this may not be exactly what you want to see. And you may need to do a little bit more to it. So notice just like in the example here, you get uh, the number of missing and unique, but you know the whole minimum, maximum, mean, it doesn't really apply here. Uh, so if we did had a BMI, let's say, um, and we wanted to find minimum, maximum, mean, that would make more sense. Uh, or height and weight like they have in the example and it would show all these things or you can pick out just one of them so uh we we could do um something though uh like with age so come back here a minute and create a new dashboard and we'll put in age and use the wizard again and grab um, so we want the mean okay for age and um, I'm going to copy this uh, actually let me try this stats table. And we want age, so we want um, mean and standard deviation. Okay, so they both highlight, uh, which is what we want. Very similar to, again, how reports work. Uh, I'm gonna copy that, uh, control C and then just plug the variable in here and save the dashboard and let's take a look at what we have so now we have the age with the mean and standard standard deviation and again this is something that you can uh create a link for public link if it's something that you want to share that um, information with somebody else so uh really slick a lot of different uh, things that you can do with it. Um, and this is uh, smart charts. So the scatter plot and the line chart, all these are different ways of displaying. So uh, 
this for what it's worth um, if you see this the pie chart had the values the percentages inside on the uh, colors that's been changed already even though they've only been in effect a couple of weeks they the next week they updated it so now these numbers appear outside the pie chart so that it doesn't conflict with what's you know showing inside so that's uh, a little sampling of what you can do with the dashboards um, there's so much more to play around with but that should be something to get you started